So we're here at the North Shore Rescue Base in North Vancouver, and we're here to donate one of those ridiculously oversized checks, along with the real one, to the BC Search and Rescue Association. And this money is going to be donated to North Shore Rescue, as well as a handful of other search and rescue organizations in the Fraser Valley and throughout the Sea to Sky Corridor to be used for their operational expenses. And this is all money that our group, Run Well Vancouver, has raised, a nonprofit that I founded a few years ago that provides education both in person and online for trail runners on backcountry safety. So all this money was donated by trail runners in the community who attended our events. And while we're here, we're gonna get a tour of the facilities and we're gonna to talk to them a little bit about how search and rescue works in BC. So let's go. Since 2016, Run Wild Vancouver has raised over $50,000 for search and rescue in BC while engaging over 500 attendees of our online and in-person educational events. Most of our programming is based on the Adventure Smart program, which was started by the BC Search and Rescue Association to help address the growing number of search and rescue calls in the province. Adventure Smart is an outdoor awareness program that was started by the BC Search and Rescue Association almost 18 years ago. We have over 1,900 search and rescue calls every year in the province of BC and it's continuing to increase with 79 search and rescue groups consisting of almost 3,000 search and rescue volunteers responding. The whole focus behind Adventure Smart is to increase awareness so we can help reduce the number and severity of search and rescue calls in the province of BC. In BC we've trained over 500 outdoor educators to help us. They're volunteers. Some of them are from Run Wild Vancouver and some of them are from search and rescue groups and others are just passionate outdoor enthusiasts. As Sandra said, there are 79 volunteer search and rescue teams around the province, but North Shore Rescue is by far the busiest, being in such close proximity to downtown Vancouver. So this is the loading bay. The whole uh, design of uh, the facility was to house the trucks because the trucks obviously last a lot longer if they're kept in a, a proper environment. The platform up here, we do uh, rope training. This is of equipment along here, the swift water um, equipment. Uh, oh, there's extra oxygen. You can see it's just all backup supplies. All of our members are meant to be self-sufficient for 24 hours. So the members have all got a key. They can get in here and they can make sure that they are fully equipped. A huge cost for us is maintaining our communications and we have seven uh, repeater stations because radios only go line of sight so we put repeaters on the top of the mountains and we send a signal up and they repeat down to all sides of the mountain. Uh, we've also got one at UBC and one at uh, SFU and they send signals up the valleys from there so between them we, uh, we cover most areas in the back country. This is the same setup in all of our SAR stations, the radios. So we've got uh, always five radios uh, that we use, digital and uh, analog. Uh, one of the, the repeaters is on Cathedral Mountain and uh, from our radios we can connect into the telephone and telephone anywhere in the world. Of course we have satellite uh, telephones as well but, uh, but just with our ordinary analog radio we can connect into the, the phone system. There's some photos here of uh, some of our SAR stations, the repeaters and the caches, about 13 caches out in the back country now. They're full of equipment so that we can uh, rush out to an area where the subject is uh, without having to ca carry a stretcher for example. Uh, there's food out there, there's uh, chainsaws, there's uh, uh, tents, sleeping bags um, and it's, uh, it's there to support both team members and subjects uh, if we get uh, stuck out any time of the year. And we don't officially uh, rescue dogs, but uh, we've had quite a few dog rescues. And typically on a dog rescue, the owner pays for the, uh, any out-of-pocket expenses uh, because the, the province does not uh, uh, cover those sort of costs. So we are all volunteers, uh, nobody's paid on the team. Our costs really are for training, huge costs involved in training to maintain our, our skill level, which keeps us safe, and then maintenance of equipment is, is a huge cost. I've been in uh, 1990s, uh, 31 years now, just over 31 years. But I'm not the oldest member on the team. It's incredible. <laughs> wow. 
we have incredible access to great terrain here in the province. That's one part of the equation. We also have a lot of outdoor enthusiasts who love the outdoors to run, bike, hike, whatever you love to do. We're an active, healthy province, but we need to help reduce the number and severity of those search and rescue calls. And it's all of our individual responsibilities to be prepared, be responsible, and plan before you go. We ask you to follow the three T's, trip plan, train, and take essentials. Mine's faster than yours.